Hello, peeps. How are you? I am going to get rid of the glasses so you can see what I'm doing. They are happy. Anyway, I got this look out of this palette. Now, the company's called Changeable. The palette is called Fantasy. I have seen the Fantasy palette with several other quote-unquote manufacturers' names on it. It came out a few months after the James Charles big artistry palette and kind of makes the fuss that he had with Wet n Wild kind of silly because this has been out for a long time now. You might recognize the layout and the color scheme. This is a mini palette. No mirror. That's okay. I don't mind the no mirror. It was less than $13. Amazon carries these by several different sellers that have put several different manufacturer names up here. The price ranges by seller. I just keep looking at them until I decide it's a price I want to want to be paying. It's and it says on the back it's deeply pigmented. I barely tapped into the shades that I used and yeah. The payoff on the pigment was amazing. If you want to see the rest of this and what I did, how I did it, and get the final opinions on the colors that I used, go this way. Hello, it's me. I'm back from the intro. Hey. Now, I should have told you some stuff about this. If I didn't, let me go over it again. I picked up this palette from Amazon. Yes, I know. Amazon is a problematic seller, but I live out in the boonie sticks and I don't have a lot of options. Okay? Okay. Now, we all know that James Charles had a cow with Wet n Wild because Wet n Wild was coming out with what appeared to be a micro palette based on the big James Charles Morphe artistry palette, whatever. Anyway, this one came out a few months after the big palette came out by a completely different company. And I'm going okay and it's stayed out it's called the fantasy palette now the current company on the top here is called changeable i've seen it from several different companies so now this one cardboard packaging no plastic which i actually prefer it's easier biodegradable there's no mirror, but have a look. They've even got the fat pans and the skinny pans, even though the small pans literally fit my fingertip. This was under 13 bucks. Okay? Okay. 
Now, I have gone through and stuck my finger in all of them and put little dots on my skin that I left on my skin so that I could determine whether or not I was sensitive to any of the ingredients. No issue. Not on the fingers that did the dipping, not on the skin that got and no I didn't do great big swatches on here I put dots because there's a lot of colors in there it's the full 39 colors it's even laid out the same as the artistry palette And yes, I still have glitter on my face from the last look I did because you know glitter. You just, it's glitter. And it will be everywhere until it decides to not be. I have left specifically playing with the palette until now. Some of you have the James Charles palette and you know what either problems or successes you have had with it. I do not own the James Charles palette and I don't anticipate owning it. However, when I saw this one for the price that it was, I started talking about wanting to get it just to see. And then I had a couple other people go, look, get it, tell us what you think. I've got the dot to dot or I'm going to get the mini or that kind of thing. I won't have a James Charles palette to compare with. However, I do have some other Morphe palettes. So, we all know Morphe does that, that private label thing. So I'm figuring I can at least check similar colors from the Morphe palette against this one to see, you know, whether the formula is completely different or it goes on different or whatever. <sighs> Now, since it's fall, I'm thinking of doing some fall colors. And this has got some pretty nifty ones up here, up through here, and some of the large pans. I'll do the blues and purples and pinks and greens and all that in a different one once I decide whether or not this is actually worth all the trouble. Let's see. Now, these do not have names. I'm taking this one right here. I'm going to start there. Now, I only tapped in this just a little bit, so I'm going to tell you, this thing's got some pigment. However, it does look darker 
in the pan than what it does on this white base by a considerable amount. Okay, let me remind you. This is the color that I picked up. This is what we're getting. I'm not mad at it, but I was thinking it would be a little darker. I will probably take some of the one of the chocolate browns to darken up a little bit towards the outer edge. take that brown that br let's make sure I'm in frame here that brown and just darken up that outer edge a little bit again I'm getting all kinds of color payoff on this just going tap 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 I'm not swirling I'm not digging in I'm just tapping in the pan And I think that is pretty spiff on its own. Especially since I heard there was some problems here and there with being able to get color payoff with the James Charles artistry. Let's be real, you couldn't help but hear about that. Everybody was talking about that. Okay, now let's see. I think I'm going to pick up that kind of yellowy orange right there. bit of a fluffy brush. Again, I am barely tapping. And in this case, I'm also barely touching the skin. Because I want this one kind of pale. As it, especially once it gets towards the inner inner corner of the eye. Why? I don't actually know. I just do. And yeah, I'm kind of gliding over the first two colors right along the top edge so that it picks up just a little bit from that to drag in.
So far, so good. Now, the last look I did, I took kind of a coppery red to put in the inner corner. I think I want to do something a little different. And I think... Yes, actually, I do once in a while think... Hush. I think I may go after a green because there's this really nifty green sparkle right there. It's kind of an evergreen green, so I'm not thinking this is going to be terribly out of theme. Get my spritzy bottle here. I've been being a little lazy. I haven't remixed my homemade setting spray, but I got, I lucked out local store had some cover girl lock it up um, and apparently they're changing the label or something and it was at a local store on like two bucks and I'm going I can do that two buck colors. Now, don't forget, I've got hooded eyes, so yes, I'm going to drag this up into that yellow so it's above the natural crease so that with any luck, when my eyes are open, we'll see the green just a little. of the color off of that fluffy brush so I'm just going to kind of bushy to bushy to bush do a little blending bit here so we're not doing lots and lots of harsh lines Now, I will probably put something a little more bright directly in the corner. Don't forget, dry your ferrule. The last thing you want is extra fluid running down into your brush to kill your bristles. And, uh, and kill your bristles means that that extra fluid could turn your glue loose at which point you're going to lose your brush it just loosens up the glue and the next thing you know your bristles are on the floor and you're PO'd Kind of the same reason they want you to dry your brushes after you wash them with the bristles hanging down. It not only helps keep the shape of the brush, it helps keep the extra fluid 
with all the soaps and stuff, you know, the brush cleaner or alcohol or whatever, from sitting in that ferrule chewing on your glue. You don't want that stuff chewing on your glue. If you like your brushes and want to keep your brushes, you will remember to keep excess fluid out of your brushes. Listen to me. I'm going to go throw some face at my face and then I will be back and we will see where we go from here. Hang out. For you, I won't be gone that long. For me, it'll take a couple of minutes. Be right back. got some base on. What I've been doing lately, at least during film, because about half the time I'm doing this because, just because I'm filming, and I use some of my Age Rewind and take care of all the red stuff that's in here and across my nose and over here, and then I got a couple of patches up in here. Let me tell you about autoimmune skin plate problems. And then I take my regular Maybelline powder. This is in light. Now, there's a couple of articles I've read lately where they're telling ladies of a certain age to get rid of their powder. And I'm like going, no, I like my powder. If all I'm doing is trying to make an even skin tone and doing it for comfort, this works just fine. Now, I've got dry skin, but I don't put this on bare skin. I put it over the moisturizer. It's like, come on, people. I've got a little bit of my AOA Studio bronzer on. Now this is one of those rainbow bars and I tend to towards the top of it and going across the forehead stick up here and under the cheeks I've got more of the darker side just to give it a little definition. I try to convince somebody that I've got like shape to my face besides round and I've got in my little basket here a collection of my stuff that I've been using this week because because it's real simple you either pick stuff out and make use of it or it sits in the drawer for no good reason. This is the pixie blush that I've been using in Whisper Pink because I don't want anything loud. At least not today. I'm not I'm doing something I wouldn't mind going out to the grocery store in. This is not big glam. I just want some color. You know how that works. Now, 
got a little bit done there. I'm going to pick up this palette again and take this little brush again. And I'm going to pick up that dark brown that I stuck right at the outside. And I'm going to sneak right up under the lower lashes part of the way across. And kind of connect the dots there. That one down. I'm going to pick up another brush. This is one of my elf brushes. It's the little short shader. And I'm going to grab up some of that very first color. that I used and scoot along right under that brown Give it just the tiniest bit of kind of a smoke out. And then I'm going to take this kind of a pinky color. I'm going to stick that in that inner corner. Now, this is another shimmer, so I'm going to be popping it with the setting spray. I absolutely love the mister on that spray bottle. It's got some pink to it. It's also got a bit of orange to it. And my way of thinking, it looks a little bit like some of the pale color mums that are real big for sitting on the front porch this time of the year. the same lip look that I did with the last look because I liked it. Got some brown brown eyeliner pencil. one of the retractable gel pencils which I rather like I believe yeah this is an LA colors and the color is Bay B A E and I'm going Come on, man. We've got so much stuff labeled Bay anymore, it's hard to keep it all 
in order. Ha! Ah, got this in the the most recent Ipsy. This is the Betty Boop and Ipsy eyeliner that they stuck in the back. It's like, look at that tip. That is a tiny little tip. And I like it. I like the formula. The only skipping that I get from it is because my hands shake. Now, I hit my face. Ha ha. Beat it, beat it. I hit my face with some of the setting spray when there was just the powder. Because I wanted to settle the powder down. Oh, I am being messy. Messy, messy. Messy, messy. Told you, my hands are shaky. Get my mascara. I know it's in here. It's in my basket. It's in here somewhere. Ah, it was hiding. Now, I don't like all the mascaras that come in the samples. There was one that came in one of the bags over the summer that had this mascara in it that was supposed to be great for going to the beach. I like to never got that stuff off my eyelashes. All right, fine. You can go get in the water. You can play in the water. You can get them eyelashes wet. They're not going anywhere. But dang that stuff. I thought I was going to end up ripping out my lashes to get rid of it. It was that tough. It wasn't only waterproof. It was proof against just about anything. My cellar water. Didn't matter. I went back to one of my other my cellars that has the, it's the two part that you have to shake up because it's got the oil in it as well as the my cellar water. That didn't take it off. And I'm going, what in the heck? This is ridiculous. If you can't get it off, at all. And you have to let it kind of wear off. Well, that was a mess. Oh, Drop my mascara right on to the dog cushion. Look at this. It's full of hair from the dog cushion. I believe I'm done putting that mascara on and I'm going to have to take my tweezers and clean this monkey up before I use it again. Close enough. Okay. My little bitty Nomad pinky champagne highlighter. I'm really liking this for the subtle stuff because, yeah, it's got a lot of shine in the pan. And when the light hits it, the shine is great. But the color is really subtle. And I have plenty of other really blingy highlighters if what I want to do is glow to be seen from space. 
Oh, we got all those women up there in Skylab. If they happen to see it and want to know what it is, yeah. I'll let them know which one I was using. But this one is definitely subtle. And I like it. Yes, I am loud. Yes, I am loud and proud on occasion. However, subtle also works. This stuff smells so good. It's one of the cucumbers. Mm -hmm. Take off the little headband. Yes, I don't have a lot of hair to fall into my face, but when it does, it's really annoying. It gets in the way of putting the makeup on. And yeah, you're, you're watching me to see makeup going on, not to see me picking at my hair and fiddling with my hair and, and, and such. Aha. Hair fall out. Ooh, not good. Yes, you can see I'm doing an ear stretch. I've got a little tunnel here, but it's not a complete tunnel. It's blocked at the back end because it's so fine. Um, and this is just a larger post to start stretching out these upper holes. I'm not going huge. I just want enough of a stretch that I can put a tunnel in and then take my inexpensive earrings, of which I have multitudes, and put them through the tunnel so that they're not actually inside my ear because some of them react and it hurts because <laughs> they're not you know they're not gold they're not sterling so and sometimes you can't tell what they are now I'm going to do again what I did yesterday I may use this darker nah let's leave that one alone I've got a very red lip pencil. And yeah, you can see where I've got that little highlight in there. And I've got a fairly good Cupid's bow. And I like my little Cupid's bow. So when I bother to do this, I make sure I've got it lined like a Cupid's bow. I know some people think it looks better, makes your lips look larger, all that stuff. If you go straight across through here and it's like, uh, yeah, no. Not my thing. This pencil's a little on the dry side. Matter of fact, both of the pencils I'm going to use are a little on the dry side. I don't care. Now, this one is a Lord and Berry that came in one of the boxes. And it's a Maxi Matte Lipstick Crayon. What was this one? Here and Now. Here now is a bit orange, in case you can't tell. And I'm just running that on the inside of the lip, under, under and or over, depending on which lip you're talking about, that berry red. So I've got kind of a pumpkin orange and the berry red. Kind of an ombre thing going on. But again, like I said, they're pretty dry. 
Let's see, where did I put it? Did I drop that in here? I thought I had put it back in the lip gloss basket. But I don't see it in the lip gloss basket. Or is it, it's hiding. It's a short thing. Now this is e.l.f. lip lacquer. And you can tell looking at the wand and some of the cloudy bits that yes, I've ended up getting lipstick in the lip lacquer because I'm doing stuff like this. There's lipstick in there. There's a little bit of glitter in there. But I just kind of pat it on. Just kind of dot it. I don't want to just rub it <clears throat> because I think that takes some of the definition out of the layered lipstick. Little. And it looks pretty good. Alrighty. That is the look. And that is what I got out of the changeable fantasy. Now, it's kind of hard to give you a complete first impressions on this one at this point because I've only used a very few of the colors. However, I'm going to say if the rest of them have the same kind of color payoff and ease of working with that these did, I am not going to be disappointed in spending just under 13 bucks. Now, I have seen this on Amazon. Depending on the seller, it has been up to 16 And I'm going, I just keep looking until I find a price that I'm going to pay. Um, but I am not disappointed with this palette. I think it was a pretty good deal. Tell me what you think. Be good.